I'm back and welcome to the Halloween book tag. Tis the season to be spooky, so let's get into the questions. Carving Pumpkins is the first one, which is what book would you carve up and light on fire? Now this year I've been into romanticy like everyone seems to be under the sun and I've read a few doozies. So when the moon hatched is going to be my answer for this one because I got 60% into it and I felt such a visceral rage and hatred for it that I slammed it down and I was like, I'm not touching this ever again. And I think it was just because the characters, they both hated each other. And then one night they just decided that, nope, they didn't hate each other anymore. They were attracted to each other. And that was the end of it. And I was like, there's no development. There's no characterization. Why are these characters here? Where are they going? Like there was no intent. There was no plot. The characters just kind of got moved around as the author thought, oh, the setting needs to change, I guess. And these characters were just so stupid. Neither of them communicated. Neither of them knew what they were doing. The main character was so angry that she just decided to not acknowledge anything in front of her face under her nose. And I'm like, how can you be that dumb and still be alive? So like I said, it was probably the worst book that I tried reading this year. And I'm so happy that I put it down. Every year I do a separate video, which is my DNFs or did not finishes. So that one is definitely making it into that video along with whatever else I put down during the year. Last year in 2023, I put down like 30 books and I'm pretty on track to do the same thing this year. So I just don't like sticking with books that make me frustrated. So I'm lucky that I put this down and that meant my reading momentum could continue on and be happy. Trick or treat, what character is a trick and what character is a treat? Maybe I could say that Paige from The Bone Season is the trick only because she is a clairvoyant. So she can use the ether, which is the magic system in here. She can reject ghosts and see them. And so I think because she can do those things, but then pretends to assimilate into everyday society as not a clairvoyant because clairvoyance in the city of Sion is illegal. So she's technically tricking Sion and trying to blend in. So I think that's who I should go for as the trick, but who should I go for as the treat? That's a really hard one to think about. I'm honestly not sure. Treat is really hard, unless you think of all the different foods that you encounter across fantasy books. Specifically, if I would have to go for that food angle for this question, I would go with Legends and Lattes because there are some delectable cinnamon scrolls in here. And every time I think about this book, I associate it with really soft, lovely, delicious cinnamon scrolls. So that would be my treat. It's a literal treat that I can mentally consume. I don't think I've had cinnamon scrolls in a very long time, but they also strike me as a very spooky season cinnamon treat. So maybe I'll have to get my hands on some. Then we've got Candy Corn. What book is always sweet? And I'm going to have to go with one of my new five star favorite books called The Spell Shop. And this is a cozy fantasy following Kiela and her sentient houseplant Kaz. And both of them escape the city of Elysium and then they return to the island of Caltre where Kiela was raised by her parents until she was eight and they took her to the city. But now her parents have passed. There was a huge rebellion in the city related to the royals. And so everything was on fire and Kiela escaped with bunches of books because she's a librarian librarian and returned to the island of Caltre and now she's got to rekindle her family's overgrown home and then also reconnect with the community at the island and that's why it's so sweet because these characters choose kindness it's just a lovely story and I haven't reread it yet because I've only just recently finished it but I definitely plan to reread it it is that cute and that adorable ghosts what character would you love to visit you as a ghost maybe the characters in wolf song because since they turn into werewolves, I wouldn't be as scared of the werewolves if they were all turned into ghosts and they could just wander around and do their thing. So I'm also allergic to animals. So I think that would work quite well actually because I wouldn't be exposed to the werewolf fur and then they could all just wander around as they pleased and be werewolves and no one would be concerned about that because they can't interact with you directly. So I think this is actually quite a good answer. I just pulled this off my shelf going, oh, surely I'll make this work, but it actually really fits. Dressing up in costume is the next one. And it's what character would you like to be for a day? And I've answered something similar to this question in another video recently. If I remember, I'll link it down below so you can go and check it out because I think I said something like, I don't want to be any character because 
all of the characters that I generally read about experience like stabbing, being on the run, emotional trauma. And I'm like, I'm not about that life. I don't want to be on the run from people. I don't want to have magic only for it to be threatened or have a toll on my body. Like I'm good sitting on my couch and reading about this stuff. Even in all of the rom-coms and romances I read, they all experience something because it's a story. So you don't want them to not experience a whole character arc. So maybe I should pick one more towards rom-com because at least then I'm not going to be chased down and stabbed by some magical police or something. So maybe I'll go with The Wedding Forecast, which was a recent read that I talked about in my September wrap up. And I gave this one four stars. I really enjoyed it. And it follows Anna, who is just turned 30 and she's broken up with her longtime partner. Anna Joel and they both split up because he didn't want kids and Anna did and they weren't quite right for each other either and now Anna is the maid of honor for her best friend's wedding and Joel is on the bridal party because he's good mates with Luke who Haley Anna's best friend is getting married to so Anna's like okay I just need to weather being in the same house with him for a while because leading up to the wedding and during the wedding the bridal party is staying together and then Joel brings his new girlfriend and his new girlfriend is pregnant and they've only been together for like five months and so Anna has a expected meltdown about this but tries to keep it together for the sake of her best friend's wedding and also at the bridal party's house is a guy named Mac and he's also a close mate of Luke, the husband-to-be, and Mac lives in LA overseas, but he's Australian, so he's come back for the wedding. And Mac and Anna really hit it off, and their relationship is really sweet. Anna also has a background in being a novelist and a writer, and so she's in a bookshop a lot. So that is the part that I'm going to focus on, the fact that she's involved with books and bookshops. Usually I hate the tropes of surprise pregnancy and a bookish character when I'm reading a book but this book somehow pulled off both and I enjoyed this one so I figured I should honor those tropes being done well by going yeah I would spend a day as this character I think she's done really well for herself given the emotional turmoil and the introspective growth that she's done I think she did a fantastic job so yes I would be her then we've got witches and wizards what was your favorite Harry Potter magical moment and I don't like that this is Harry Potter focused some of my favorite magical moments would be, I guess, more cinematic moments. So if you look at Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, there are plenty of moments like that. I can imagine this like it is a movie. And that's because Vin, our protagonist in here, she's what's called a Mistborn. So she can ingest metals in, you know, drinking vials and then burn them in her stomach and use that to engage with the magic system. But the magic system is so specific because different types of metal enact different types of magical ability. So she can push and pull and do a bunch of other things in this world. But the way that the magic is described, it's very understandable and it's structured. And because it's got that structure, it helps you visualize all of the fight scenes so much more easily and it makes them so much more dynamic too because when the characters play with these rules and you feel like they get stuck because you're familiar with the rules so you're like oh no where can this character go now I know that they can't push and pull I know they can't do this and that what are they gonna do and then they have to improvise so it makes it that much more gripping and cinematic when you're reading it that is a literal magical moment they are subverting or using the magic system to bring surprise to the reader which is very clever then we've got blood and gore which is what book was so creepy that you had to take a break from for a while and I don't read horror books I've actually done a video where I talk about scary books for scaredy cats I don't read horror so I put those together instead so in terms of a book that I put down because it was too scary I would say that one of the recommendations from that video I would consider scary but I didn't really put it down because it was scary I just felt the atmosphere and I knew that it was creepy and that would be the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires which had a very sinister undertone atmosphere so I would recommend that if you're interested but that is the end of this video please leave me some Halloween or spooky emojis if you got this far in the video I would be very appreciative but thank you so much for watching I'll come chat to you down below in the comments and I'll see you in my next video bye